what do we have here? Another scrumptious young plaything straight out of life and into my club? Mmm, you smell new, little boy. Like fabric softener do on freshly mowed astroturf. Oh, I'm not frightening you, am I, duckling? <laughs> I can tell you and I are going to get along just like fire hoses. When we get turned on, there's bound to be flames. I'm the finger down your spine when all the lights are out. And the name on all the men's room walls. When I pout, the whole world tries to make me smile. And everyone always wants to know who is that girl. I am Jeanette. And this bit of chaos crammed in a certifiable giggle is my club. I just love to give you funny feelings all night, sweetheart, but I really must trouble with some business. We'll reunite sweet and soon, I promise. with your turn of the century bar. I always assumed you could do nothing but look down. Just the sight of you. The sight of that wicked, painted pipe, concealing that dirty, diseased mind. Sin! You have no sin. <laughs> Let's see who is without sin past the fierce tone. Go ahead and mock me. You pull your pranks, make fun of my ways. It suits you. You're just one big joke. Don't you call me that? Should I start calling a duck a pig as well? I'm your sister. How can you treat me like this? That's it, Jeanette. Run away from the truth. I'll take care of everything, as always. Please, come in. I do apologize for my sister's crassness if it made you uncomfortable. She's unabashedly scandalous, but... In the club business, I suppose that kind of personality is a necessary evil. Therese Vorman, yes. I'm the proprietor of this club, and the only person in this city whose good side it's in your best interest to stay on. What brings you to Santa Monica? Tongue's exile is self-imposed, I assure you. But then, what reason would I have not to hate that loathsome Nosferatu scoundrel? Bloody Nosferatu... They're so... unclean. He meddles in my affairs. He's a bad influence on my sister and she on him. If you were in my place, would you let him compromise your authority? You most certainly would not. I'd quite like it if I never had to hear that name again. Why would I do that? Let him think I mean to kill him. That way I don't have to worry about him sabotaging everything. Do you realize how his subterfuge makes me look to the Camarilla? Tongue and his co-conspirators' actions ruined my chance at partnership in a crucial piece of property. I do have several other promising ventures, and one in particular has been, to say the least, an ordeal. Hmm. I'd be willing to put the word out that my grievances with Tongue have been swept under the rug, but in return... You'll have to help me remove a particularly burdensome spirit from a property I'm looking to invest in. 
Rumor is that a personal item of a ghost may be used to draw it out or excise it from its haunt. While I don't put a lot of stock in hearsay, it's my last option. So I want you to go to the Ocean House Hotel, find an item of the spirits, and bring it back. Oh, I fully intend to do so. You'll find that dealing with me on the whole is appreciably more predictable than dealing with some of the egomaniacs that are my peers. So long as our business doesn't go sour, my word is gold. Before I forget, take this. The only way to reach the Ocean House this time of night is through a tunnel in the sewers. You'll need that key to open the gate for that tunnel. If you'll excuse me, I've got situations to set straight. How odd. I was just having naughty thoughts about you. You made quite an impression earlier. Did you come up just to cheer lonely little me? Really? Do I often pogo stick through your thoughts wearing nothing but a smile? Be honest. Or don't. What all suede kittens do. On hands and knees you lap up the milk of me. And we purr, kitten, like dragonflies buzzing around frog bellies. So, Therese told me you might be back with something for her. Do you have it with you? I'm not just some silly doll, you know. All my life, my sisters made me out to be a joke. She told you I was an embarrassment, didn't she? That I couldn't tie my shoes, let alone hold on to something for her. Is that it? She's always belittling me. She's the smart one. She's the favorite. She's the successful one. Well, it's not fair. I'm not a fool. This club's success is just as much my doing as it is hers. Do you understand what it's like to have your own flesh and blood ripping you apart on a daily basis for two lifetimes? Can you? Fine. You hold on to it. Hmm, since you are so willing to brave that big spooky place for my darling sister, how about doing a teensy tiny favor for little troubled me? Do you know Gallery Noir down the street? I happen to know there's a charity event being organized there. Lots of influential Santa Monicans slithering in for token appearances. But there's one thing they don't know. The whole event's been set up by a kindred trying to establish their own power click in our city. And we can't let that happen, can we? So I need some brilliant young upstart to spoil the milk. <laughs> I promise this won't take long. Take this knife. Give the paintings in the gallery a good slashing. Don't get caught, and don't turn it into a massacre. And steal the charity box, would you? Buy yourself something velvet. I'm sure Therese will be thrilled to honor your agreement when you get back. But in the meantime, get to the museum and ruin those paintings. Then pay me a visit. I want to hear all about it. Hurry up. I can only amuse myself for so long. Oh, and there was something about the paintings. Hmm, what was it? I can't remember. Oh well, have fun, duckling. You. What were you thinking? The museum. That was my event. Did you think I wouldn't find out? Shut up. I thought I could control my sister as long as tongue was out of the picture. But nothing's changed. I should have expected that you'd succumb to Jeanette's influence like all the others. But how dare you? Jeanette claimed you did it for her. But let's say I believe you. After all, you've acted decently and rationally up to now. I imagine you'd still like me to call off the feud. Excellent! I'll take that. However, there's only one problem. If Tongue gets word that I threaten Jeanette, which he most certainly already has, it's not likely he'll believe me. So, in order to call off the feud, you're going to have to convince Jeanette to forgive me first. I made some threats against my sister. Idle threats, involving fire and her impious satin sheets. She took them quite seriously, and is avoiding me. 
I want to meet with her and explain that they were said in the heat of the moment. I asked her to meet me at the Surfside Diner to reconcile, but I'm busy with the club and my other endeavors. I'd like you to go to the diner and promise her that I don't plan to take any action against her. Wait for her in the back booth, near the phones. For all her unwholesome diversions and irritating disruptions, I should be less tolerant of her. She is my sister, however, and I suppose I'm obligated to forgive her her trespasses. I did sire her, after all. Please, be quick about it. You. I'm really sorry it had to end this way. I truly am. You seem promising, but you've been tainted by the stink of my sister's schemes. And now I'm going to make sure she never double-crosses me again. Don't listen to her. She'll kill us both. Save me and I'll help you find Bertram, I swear. Shut up, Jeanette! I warned you to stay away from Tongue. He's turned you against me. I always looked out for you, but you couldn't stand my success. You had to meddle, didn't you? I didn't want it to end like this, but you forced me! You never gave me any credit for anything, Therese. I was the one calling the shots. Bertram was dancing on my leash. How does it feel to know that I beat you? Isn't it obvious? I'm about to rid the night of this deviant, backstabbing whore! Do you realize that despite her condition, she still... fornicates with kind, no less? So despicable. So unclean! You're one to talk, dear sister. Or should I say daddy's little girl? Do you want to know just how depraved the Baron of Santa Monica can be? Shut up, Jeanette. You'd love the world to think you're a saint. When you thought I was asleep, I used to hear father come in at night. I heard him whisper how much he loved you in your ear before he... Don't finish that sentence or you're dead. Don't you want to hear what happened? How she became the pillar of the community she is today? Shut up. Just shut up! Don't try and stop me. I've had to overlook her treachery, her seduction, relations with my enemies, and the consequences of it. But I won't endure her any longer. Endure me? Dear sister, you've done everything you could to smother me. You love to bury me in your closet, along with all your other skeletons. I'm the good girl. You're the wicked one. You've done nothing but plot against me, when I had our best interests at heart. And despite that, I've always covered up your mistakes. I've taken care of you. And this is how you repay me? Taken care of me? You've done nothing but keep me down. Blame me for every mistake. Did you expect me to let you rule my life until the end of time? No, sister. You've had it coming since our last sunrise. Is that right, dear? If it wasn't for me, you would have never survived this long. Remember? They tried to separate us, but I refused. I chose this life and brought you into it so that we could stay together. Obviously, you've forgotten. She's a control freak. People, things, emotions. If she can't control something, she gets rid of it. And you're a wild animal. You'll rub up against anything that'll take you in for the night. Then when you're stuffed and bored, you bite the hand that fed you. I don't think that's possible. How could I ever think to trust her again? Trust me? Who could trust you after what happened with Father Dearest? Father loved me. I was a good girl. I always did what I was told. You always hated that he loved me. You disobeyed him. You brought men home when he wasn't there. You were an awful daughter to him. Father came home drunk one day and mistook me for Therese. Because I'd fallen asleep in her bed. Don't listen to her. She's lying. Therese walked in while he was there and she saw me lying with him and so she went to the closet and pulled out his hunting shotgun, loaded it with deer shot and blew his mind out all over the silly clown wallpaper. That's a lie. Father killed himself because of Jeanette. She made him miserable. As I recall, he died with a smile on his face. Why? How will this time be any different? Therese doesn't like to share. Jeanette's irresponsible. She's undependable. A venture like mine requires class and distinction, which is something a pigtailed, face-painting harlot does not lend very well. You do have a way with words, sister. You're right. I'm not in the same class, am I? I mean, murderers are so respectful these days. More responsibility. So that she can ruin every opportunity I give her? Of course. You're the only one who can secure zoning permits and shake hands. I'd never be able to keep up. 
But I only do it for attention and out of love. You do it because you're vindictive and jealous and you deserve it. If she would stop treating me like a child. If she would start behaving like a rational adult. Yes, there was a time. When I was a child, I didn't have many friends. I suppose Jeanette was the only one. We never did get to go out of the house much. Father wouldn't allow us. He said we'd get hurt, so we stayed inside and we imagined our own worlds. And we spent so much time there together, ruling over those places. Those were happier times, before we grew apart. I never did. No, I guess I don't. Jeanette, if I were to give... Offer you equal control in Santa Monica. Would you quit consorting with Tongue? I'll stop working against you with him. But since I've got him in my pocket already, there's no reason for me not to pay him a little visit once in a while, when he can be of use. That's not a bad plan. There's just one more thing. I want to be in charge of Santa Monica, but only publicly. I want you to continue to convince others that our relations are strained. That way, we know who our enemies are. I agree. Take it. I'd hate to look at it again and think of what almost transpired. I suppose now that Jeanette and I have settled our differences, I'll call off the feud with Tongue. Bertram's hiding in an empty oil tank at the old gas station. I'll tell him to expect a visitor, and I'll ask him to be extra nice. Please give Santa Monica's regards to the prince. And keep your tongue tied about what happened tonight, or we'll have to kill you. <laughs>